All right, let's look at part B, medical expenses. Part B, medical expenses. Every year you pay a deductible. All right, I don't have full 2021 numbers yet. Like I said, they're not approved. For the annual deductible for 2020 was $198. You pay that, like I said, the first part of the year. Hopefully, we'll get the Part B numbers soon. They usually come out by mid-October. So Part B covers for medical expenses that aren't part of inpatient. It pays for home health care that's not after a hospitalization. It pays for outpatient hospital services. I go to the emergency room or I'm upstairs and I'm in observation status, or I have to go get my knee scoped. I'm getting services from the hospital, but they're outpatient services. And the fourth thing it pays is for durable medical equipment, wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds. Normally under Part B, you have the annual deductible, and then normally after that, it's usually that 80-20 split. Medicare picking up 80%, you picking up the 20%. So medical expenses, home health care, outpatient hospital, durable medical equipment. Now, part of the Affordable Care Act passed a law that created the Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, IRMA. Basically what this means is if I make more, I pay a higher Part B monthly premium. What it comes down to is let's look at an individual. If I make less than $87,000, I pay my normal 14460 Part B. But if I make over that, I pay some more money on top of it. I'll pay an extra 5780 if I make less than 109,000 and it progressively goes up. So that's part of the Affordable Care Act. If you're higher income, you may have a higher Part B premium. Uh, I've had people call me about this and they want to yell at me about it. And all I can tell them is this is the law. Your federal legislators, the only ones can change it. You know, this is the, what the law says. Now, Part B, another big thing that Part B pays for is preventive services. These also came about as part of the Affordable Care Act. Preventive services, basically, they're going to keep you healthier by catching and diagnosing things earlier. I'd rather catch something in stage one than stage four. They'll also save money for you and for Medicare. There's about 28 different preventive services out there. Everybody on Medicare should be getting or already have the 2020 Medicare and You handbook. It looks like this, but it says, it looks like this. All these services are listed in that handbook. Please take a look and make sure all the things you're eligible for, most of these Preventive services are free. You've got certain criteria to meet, and then your doctor has to accept assignment. What that means is they've signed a contract with Medicare that they'll accept Medicare's approved charge as payment in full. So there's a lot of preventive services out there available to you. Most of them you pay nothing for. Please check it out in your 2021 Medicare and you handbook. All right, any other, we got any questions out there, Tammy, before we move into Medicare supplements? Um, there is one question, but um, Tammy ran out real fast and okay. she'll be right back. All right, hold on so a second. I'm gonna we can continue about... with the slide. Okay, all right. Like I said, these were all the, we talked about so far, original Medicare, what A covers, what B covers, and we saw all those costs, which can be significant. 
one option that people may have available to them to help pay for those costs that you saw in those charts is to purchase a Medicare supplement. All right, this is just an example of what a Medicare supplement card will look like. Notice when you look at that card, our example, it has plan F on their circle. I'll show you that all these Medicare supplement plans are lettered and there's different ones. You'll notice in our little puzzle, it's showing you Medicare supplement hooking up with A and B. All right, when can I, when is the best time to get a Medicare supplement? Remember I told you everything in Medicare is about timelines. The best time to get a Medicare supplement is what they call the Med it's Medicare supplement, MedSup, Medigap, all the same thing. Okay, so if you hear Medigap, MedSup, all the same, all the same animal there. A Medicare supplement is a private policy from a private insurance company. Now, when's the best time to si sign up? It's during that Medigap open enrollment period. That begins six months from when you start Part B. And the big deal with that is for that six month period from when you start Part B, there is no medical underwriting. It is guaranteed issue. No matter what health you're in, a med sub company must sell you a policy. So like I said, these, are pri these aren't Medicare policies. These are private policies from private companies. They have to follow Medicare law, and this is one of those laws. So if you get it any time within those first six months, they cannot turn you down, okay? If you're somebody that, like I talked about earlier, you're still working and you defer your Part B, hey, I haven't got Part B yet. So once I retire and if I take Part B, then that's when that six month clock starts ticking, okay? Now, remember I told you that we have the two main categories are people age 65 and people that are under 65 on Medicare due to disability. Well, in Illinois, people on Medicare due to disability get that same six month guaranteed issue. The reason I say this is because some states don't have this. Some states, people that are on Medicare due to disability have no rights, they can be turned down for a Medicare supplement. So this is a big deal in Illinois. So somebody on due to disability has that same six month guaranteed issue open enrollment. Now, is that policy gonna cost you a higher monthly premium? Sure, it will. All right, because you're gonna, you're gonna end up costing more money because you usually have more medical costs, but all these plans are regulated by the Illinois Department of Insurance. They cannot just say, you're disabled, we're gonna charge you this exorbitant price. They're limited, they can't charge you any higher than the highest policy rating they've got. So there are limitations. So somebody under 65 can get a med sub, but it will cost them more. But that monthly premium is probably gonna be a lot less for some people than the, having to pay out of pocket for those medical costs, okay? Now. Dave? Yes, ma'am. I apologize for oh, interrupting. Okay. We, we do have a couple of, cu couple of questions that are a few slides back. The first okay. one being, does Medicare cover anything for home health care if the patient is released from a skilled care center instead of from a hospital? Yes, yes. Anywhere in that, if you're on that part A chart, let me go back. Great question. So anywhere they can get home health care, if it's based upon that hospitalization, so if they go inpatient hospital, skilled nursing, home health care, part A pays for it as long as it's based upon that hospitalization. Doesn't matter if they come from the hospital or the skilled nursing. 
We'll talk about also in part B, there's home health care. It's just not based upon that hospitalization. The only difference is it's based upon that hospitalization, but they can go there from the inpatient hospital, from the skilled nursing, either or. Good question. You got another? And the second question is, um, Mr. Lundgren is a retired teacher. His social security statement says he has earned enough credits from Medicare, but he does not see how many quarters he's earned. He does, does he have a my, I first question I'd ask, I'd ask is, does he have a my SSA account? Because if you sign up for a my social security account, it should tell him. If not, he'll have to call social security, but I'm almost, I pulled up those for people. It almost always tells. Now, if he's looking at it through the My Social Security account, he may have to get some other tabs, but to the best of my knowledge, that account should show the exact amount of quarters. If not, then you're gonna have to call Social Security. And I've got some phone numbers for them going ahead. Now, being a retired teacher, that also throws a lot of stuff, in, uh, stuff into this. I'm assuming he worked some other jobs in addition to being a teacher because a lot of teachers don't pay into Medicare. Some of them may pay into Social Security, but they may not pay into Medicare. So that's something we'd have to look at individually and see. So teachers are in a, in a whole different ball of wax. They also, if they're teachers and they get their insurance through the state of Illinois for their retirees, it is different as well. So we'd have to look at that statement individually and see. But the, the quick answer is, if it's not on that statement, he'll have to call Social Security to make sure. Okay. Would you recommend that maybe he set an appointment with a SHIP counselor? Um, if he doesn't know how to set up a My Social Security account, uh, yeah, prob probably, but otherwise, setting up a My Social Security account, if you're computer savvy at all, you know, you, you can do it. It's going to ask you a million questions because it's so secure. You know, you had a loan in 1990 from what bank and all this kind of good stuff. But if he has issues setting that up, sure, then, then I would call our 1-800 number, which will be posted again. And you know somebody can help him walk through that. Otherwise, it'd probably be just as easy to contact Social Security, and I'm going to give you numbers for those as well. Now, obviously, we're during COVID; things take longer. But going straight to Social Security may be, you know, maybe an alternative for him. Any others before we progress? That clears the questions currently.